This is how day four started for us. It was pouring rain. If you've looked at going to Bowron Lakes, you know that the lakes meet the Caribou River at the end of Isaac Lake, and there's something called the shoot. Day four is the day that we did the shoot. It's where the rapids are. On our way towards the chute, we caught some good fish. We got some lake trout, and here's a nice view of us getting it. The fish were closer to the surface of the water because it was pouring rain. Here's another one. Hello! This is day four, and uh, it's pouring rain. Uh, we just did the chute uh, with like the, you know, the rapids that they have, and uh, so now we have to portage around the waterfall. So we're currently walking on the trail. We just portaged our canoe and now we're heading back to grab our gear. Um, yeah, we canoed probably, what do you think, six, six kilometers, maybe 10 kilometers today, this morning, until we got to the, the chute where the uh, Isaac Lake meets the Caribou River. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna be river canoeing for a couple of minutes after uh, we get all our stuff. So we're happy about that. You have to paddle us because uh, the river just takes you down. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Skylar caught a fish today. His first fish ever. It was a lake trout. Um, so he's super pumped about that. And yeah, we're getting soaking wet. So um, we're going to try and stay dry. <laughs> okay, bye. I just want to show this video for reference of what you have to do if you're thinking about going to Bowron Lakes and using wheels with your canoe. This is our friends along the way who are using wheels. They're loading their about 70 pound canoe on so that they can walk along the trail with their canoe with all of their gear loaded instead of carrying it. Because our canoe is lightweight, we decided to carry it with our gear instead of using wheels because we didn't want to drag the wheels through the mud. We knew that it was going to be rainy and some of the trails aren't that well maintained and so they can be difficult even with the wheels on. So you really just got to choose based off your situation how heavy your gear is, how heavy your canoe is, and the weather. This is on the fourth portage so they've had a little bit of practice uh, getting their canoe onto the wheel so far. All right we're back on the water with the waterfall behind us so we're safely back and uh, in the Caribou River. This is the beautiful and iconic view that you come out of after the shoot and it is beautiful and you're just floating along the Caribou River. You have to portage twice around a waterfall so everyone's really happy getting onto the water and floating for a little bit. The water was quite high and fast moving and we ended up finding this abandoned kayak down in the Caribou River. We recognized this kayak and it had tags on it dated for the same day we started so we knew that the people who were in this kayak were people that we've seen at another camp before. There was another green kayak we also recognized, but we couldn't tow both. We towed it to the emergency shelter where we found some people who told us what happened. Two people capsized into the Caribou River and luckily there was a group not too far behind them with two guides on board, trained in swift water rescue who were able to get them into their canoe. They transported them to this emergency shelter where they were able to contact the rangers with a radio. The rangers came in their motorboat and transported them off the circuit. Rangers are the only ones on Bowron Lake circuit who are allowed motorboats. This is what the kayak looked like, and obviously you can see that the wheels have completely unbalanced the kayak. So it's no surprise that an inexperienced kayaker loaded with gear like this would capsize when maneuvering in moving water. This person's wallet, passport, and car keys were inside of the kayak when he had to abandon it. We left the kayak at the emergency shelter in hopes that the rangers could return some of the important items to the people who had capsized. We ended staying the night at this emergency shelter. We can't sleep in it, but we were able to hang up our gear after a sopping wet day. There is a wood burning stove that we all collected firewood and helped dry it out and keep the fire going to keep it warm. And that was the end of our day.